Hey everyone, it's JS Wessler here. Uh, today, since it's just over two months since I released my game, Annie in the Art Gallery, I just wanted to do a developer commentary to just explain some of the things that like, made up the story of this game, what inspired the gameplay, and everything else. So yeah, let's get into it. I guess the first thing I could talk about is this tutorial screen, which still has the old interface that I haven't gotten around to redo the screenshots yet. Um, yeah, so this is the first playthrough, so there's less weird stuff in the gallery this time. Originally when the game came out, there was a lot of, a lot of weird stuff like this here, and she'd go into the painting, and I felt, I just felt after watching a bunch of YouTube playthroughs, people were so confused by that, so I just took it out. Um, a lot of things in this gallery are references to where this game is supposed to take place. I'm going to keep that a secret for now, but yeah, things, let me see. Uh, this one is a reference to where this game takes place. Uh, let's see. This one as well. I think this one too. Yeah, large airport. So if anyone knows, feel free to point it out. Um, there's a couple of fire extinguishers littered through the game. If you have a uh, hard mode on, Annie will comment that they're her greatest enemy. I thought that was pretty funny. And here we have uh, Anne from the game called Anne on Steam. It's a nice free game by Rong Rong. It's definitely inspired this game. And there's a lot of references to that in this game. And I'll be picking up that flash drive later in the run. Some plants. Let's see. Some people I don't recognize. Yeah, a lot of these are just miscellaneous things. This is new and the collision doesn't work, sadly. <laughs> I'm going to be fixing that. Just for everyone's information, this is a beta copy of the game. This is going to be the next patch. It's, by the time you watch this video, it's probably going to be live, but I'm not sure. What's this? I just got rid of the collision. This is another reference to Anne, or maybe Eve, I think. It's Kylie and Jane. If you go on hard mode, it says that instead of two people. Just a fun little nod. I like this line a lot. It's, <laughs> I remember writing that. So yeah, I'm gonna talk about the beginning of the game a little bit. So originally, it was gonna start you in a room before this, and she, Annie was going to say her two lines of dialogue, like, oh, I'm so excited to see everything in that, like, before room instead of here. But I just took that out because I wanted to do that beginning drawing, and I didn't really know how to make that work with the before room. Here's a character walking around. She's the only one here with a walk cycle. It might mean something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and I just sort of... Filled the gallery with a lot of stuff. Here's Brendan, we can go talk to him. Brendan's dialogue actually changes a lot if you speak to the director before, because Annie will realize who he actually is. Yeah. I also shortened the dialogue a lot between patches, because it was just really long and annoying. This was probably the first joke I wrote in the script of the game. It was on the original like like Google Docs script I had for the game, and it just stuck all the way through. Even though I don't, it's not really that funny, but yeah. A lot of people commented why Annie would go along with Brendan if he's taking her to like a dark, secluded basement. It's because she's like she's intended to be like a huge fangirl of this art exhibit and Brendan. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. That's a bug. That is something I know about, and I've tried to fix it, and the code should work, and it just doesn't. So, I don't really know. But yeah, we can go follow Brendan and explore the art gallery. I made most of the sound effects in this game. A lot of them are edited versions of other sound effects used. And like the, the base RPG Maker stuff, but some of them are custom. 
Especially some of like the background sounds as part of the game. Where did Brendan go? Yeah, the, the, a lot of people commented, why doesn't Annie just turn around right now? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Going to turn up the audio. Yeah, these background sounds are from a different source. And we're running through. This room here, this room has probably undergone the most changes over the course of development. This used to be just a straight hallway, and about halfway through, you uh, there'd be a text box that says, don't look behind you. And then you'd be like, what? And if you looked behind you, you'd just die. And I, for some reason, I thought that was hilarious, and I got, a fir I got my first playtester, and he hated it, so I took it out. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then we're gonna get to these holes in the ground. That sound effect is an RPG Maker default. It's used a lot in uh, other games, especially Witch's House, which this game is heavily inspired by. This is probably, that falling pot is probably the only jump scare that I've seen that actually gets people. <laughs> a lot of people on YouTube freaked out at that, and it was fun to watch because it just completely comes out of nowhere. Yeah, I'm gonna try and step on all the holes. Most of these ones here are, are designed to blow out because they need to teach you that that's what happens. One of the last pixel art changes I did before the game came out was actually doubling the sizes of these switches, because they used to be really hard to see. Um, yeah, and then I can look in our inventory, and there's a switch. And ooh, spooky! That's also, that, those sort of, like, appearances of Kylie are sort of levy from Witch's House as well. I like how that game did sort of pseudo jump scares like that. Yeah, maybe some of his art is down here. Or maybe it just isn't his. He's really good at it. Yeah, it's supposed to show Annie being a huge fangirl. And then I have this here. This is designed to show you that not all the cracked floors will break under you. I, I was kind of happy with how this turned out. And let's go get an achievement. I'm not playing this on Steam, so it's not actually going to give me the achievement. But yeah, there we go. Wooden table. I just sort of put random objects down here, just for fun. Yeah, the clay exhibit. That was sort of the working title of this area while in development. And his dialogue also changes if you pick up the clay first, so I'm gonna go do that now. And I added this line later on, just to Give a little bit more personality to Annie. Yeah, if you grab the clay, she doesn't say that last part, so... Hmm. This was also one of the first things I scripted out in the game. Like, just this room here and the scene where she'd burn the clay and reveal her power. It was originally going to be there'd be a, a clay statue chasing her, kind of like what happens later. And she'd burn it, and that would be the first time you'd see her power. Um, but I changed it to this because this is just a little bit less, like, intense, I guess. I wanted the intensity to ramp up. And we get this cutscene, which was redrawn a couple times, let's just say, because the old one was very bad. If I remember in post, I'll put up a picture of what the old one looked like. But rest assured, it was uh, very bad. Why does she just turn around? I don't know, whatever. And then we have these little chapter introductions, which are um, inspired by Project Cat, which is a really fun free horror game that's kind of like this. And then we have this, which is a, uh, again, if I remember, I'll put up the panel. Uh, it's from the Witch's House manga. It's inspired by that, this pose and this sort of background. 
Hello? I probably won't remember to do it in Vegas, but whatever. And then we have uh, the Clay Annie. And uh, you can turn around. If you do this, it faces the same direction. <laughs> So you can see the similarities. I recently, you know what? Uh, I need to check that, but it's probably fine. Yeah, and every time this moves in, he has different dialogue. This guy has like eight different event pages. It's it was really annoying to try and program that. What was I gonna talk about? A suspiciously big mound of clay. Yeah, I drew this sprite and I realized I didn't need it, but I just stuck it here. I made it suspiciously big. <laughs> it's a new line. So this tile here, when the game came out, you could walk over it, but now I made it so that you can't. And it was pretty much exclusively just so you couldn't click on this painting. <laughs> it was, um, th this painting used to have this little, like, random jump scare, and it just did not work in the, the, uh, course of the game so I just took I, I didn't take it out but I just put this thing here so you couldn't actually interact with the painting at all um, so yeah just an instance of me being a lazy game designer I got a switch and the timing of that is pretty weird because if they hold enter it goes faster than it's supposed to shit I'm going to save on file 4 I need to remember that I'm gonna be totally real, that actually got me a little bit. That's, uh, god darn it. Unfortunately, the issue with... Yeah, okay, the issue with that, um, tile that was taken out, or the, the tile where Collision was turned off, was that there was one of them in this room. I think it was, like, here, maybe. And you couldn't walk over it, so people would just get stuck. <laughs> and then... So, like, for probably, like, six hours, you just couldn't play the game. <laughs> and uh, I fixed it, though. So, yeah, this was kind of what was going to happen initially. With, instead of, like, the burning the clay, it was going to be something like this. And that was going to be the first time I had to use your power. What the fuck? Yeah, I, I, I've gotten a lot of uh, high notes from... And he's occasional swearing. It was kind of fun to write her dialogue. Small key. Small key. Clay key. You can go trample its corpse as well. And you can't go back here. You can see I really like this uh, this sprite here. <laughs> And okay, yeah, so this this is the only one that's interactable, and it's because somebody, I think in one of the, the comment sections of one of the YouTube videos I watched on this game, it was, somebody was questioning, oh, can you like interact with the air vent? So I just made it so that it would just say a statue with an air vent behind it and nothing else. I think, yeah, a statue with a large hole in the wall behind it, I did that for that one. And this one used to move, but it was kind of broken, so I turned it off. So yeah, time to move on. And they turn and look at you. And here is some dialogue. So this light puzzle that's coming up is something I knew I wanted to do. It's pretty directly inspired by Witch's House. The, I, forget, I don't know, like I haven't played the game but I've watched a lot of YouTube Let's Plays. It is, inspired by a scene near the end of the game when you're on like the grass floor where you're holding like a, a firefly in a jar. I'll put up a, a little video of it if I can, if I can find it. Um, and it's that and then the sort of like flashlight strobe mechanic is inspired by uh, FNAF's uh, sister location. Uh, some of the sound effects are from there. And the UI is inspired by Eastward. I'm going to be real. I played Eastward. I didn't really like it that much. I felt it was too long. But it was definitely a really fun game. And I was definitely inspired by it for this. 
I sort of played in the middle of developing this game. So yeah, you have to go on. It's really dark in here. And you get this little tutorial here. And you can see, I didn't exactly know that I was so, these like permanent lights have, are new and I didn't anticipate that. So I'm gonna just kind of cheat my way through this because I know where I'm going. <laughs> so yeah, this like HUD on the bottom left that's inspired by Eastward, sort of that like triangular shaped thing. You can also just hold shift and run. I don't really know. Yeah, and here we go. We're in the extra room. See, so yeah, this is the first instance of one of the new uh, flashing lights that tell you what to do in some situations. I'm going to ignore that and look at this. So I've gotten a lot of people who think that, so it says inspiration for Annie's powers. A lot of people think that Brennan created Annie. I'm going to be real. That's just not the case. These are, these are all just a hundred percent meta. This is just my inspirations for, um, what each of these like parts are. So this one is a Reddit no sleep series called Lily Mad Whip, and it's a really fun read. And yeah, I read it a couple years ago and then... Yeah, so I'm gonna flip the switch. One of my, <laughs> one of the playtesters thought that um, the door was actually the door down here. Oops. Mm, okay, whatever. <laughs> oh, a little too far. And we're gonna go back, all the way back. What is this supposed to be reference to? Oh, I'll, you know what? I'll, I will get to this later because there are a, this is a book series and there are a lot of references to this spread out throughout the game. Pocket Watch, this is a different book series. Um, let's see. So yeah, when you came back here, this one used to move down and block your path, but it ended up getting stuck a couple times and it made you reset the game. Um, so I just got rid of it because it, it, the code, again, the code looked like it would work, but it just didn't. So this is supposed to be FNAF sister location. <laughs> so about the, there are two of these in the game and this was, this was an old sprite that used to fall down on you in one of the origami gallery rooms, but it was just too hard of a puzzle. So I just got rid of it and moved the sprites to look like decorations. Let's see. What's this one? Blank frame. Yeah, some of them are still blank. The mirror gallery. So this room very recently got a facelift. Um... Yeah, the, the floor texture here was one of the RPG Maker defaults for the longest time, but now it's fixed. And a lot of people didn't see the missing books, so I had to I had to do this to sort of... I put one of the flashing lights here to tell them that there's more to this room. And we're here, and we can pick up the red book. This puzzle used to be only the red book, and you would talk to her, and it would just pop up the red book. Um, let's see. So the interesting thing about this puzzle is that, yeah. So the way that using items works, you have to do it at specific locations. It can't just be, oh, I changed an option, hang on. Yeah, you have to use an item at specific locations. It doesn't matter what room you're in. So as long as you're at like whatever X, Y this is, it'll work. So in this room, I blocked off the two areas where the books are. So you, you just can't use them in here. 
Instead of, like, having a room check like a sensible person. So this is some weird dialogue that I added later on. It was just supposed to give more personality to Annie and how she feels about being different. Yeah, this, this line is a bit of a meta joke, but... Might have removed it. The book just appears. Ooh. Yes, please. I also like the sort of coloring effect that goes on in this room. It flips between a couple of different colors every couple of seconds. And here we have the blue book. So, the other thing to note about this room, oh hang on, is that the, this room used to be completely different in another version of the game. It was basically another light puzzle, except you'd have to keep it dark, so if you flash your light at all, you'd die. Um, that was just removed because I didn't want to do two different light puzzles with two different mechanics. And I replaced it with that because it was just a, a little fun puzzle and added a bit more story. I will talk about this game's story later, when it actually becomes prevalent. The other thing to note while I'm running here is Annie's sprite. So for about half of this game's development, all the sprites were used were the default like RPG Maker sprites. So it was just really weird to go, go from that to the two high sprites that I use now. And I feel like I did a good job. Um, let's see. He's got to be in this room somewhere. Yeah, the two high sprites that I use now are pretty good, in my opinion. They're sort of based off the and sprites, but they're sort of my own twist on it. Alright, time to head for the exit. Here's the exit. Annie sort of gets a little worried here. She doesn't know if she's ever gonna make it out. It's also the, the second traffic cone. It's important later. Why those are here. Those are here, it's sort of, the reason all these traffic cones are here, it's sort of Jane's representation of her death. And it's also why there's lampposts everywhere. We have Strange looking table, it's a joke on how bad I am at pixel art. <laughs> and we're gonna get the perfection achievement, which is to do that, and we win. <laughs> we have two switches left, and it checks if we have, it takes away one, it checks if we have one left, and it gives us the achievement. And it takes away both of them. <laughs> Yeah, this, I forgot why I made that joke. It was just kind of stupid. So here we're coming to the first sort of... I don't want to call them an intermission, but sort of like a, a teleportation scene. This one used to... There used to be three instead of two at, in the game. And this one was way up back in that room. That first room where you start hard mode in. Um, but I moved it here just because it was too sudden. Those static effects, I think, are screenshots from a YouTube video, honestly. <laughs> and yeah, now we're here. So, this area, it was originally designed that you'd play Frogger with cars here, but I took that out just because I didn't want to pixel model cars, and I figured the, the scene would work just as well without doing that. It would just be annoying to have to dodge cars constantly. And also, it didn't really mean anything to the story, so I just got rid of it. And yeah, here is Jane. Let's say hello to her. What is this place? Who are you? 
while I'm doing this, I'm going to scroll down on my script document here. That's sort of old, but it has a bunch of the original lines of dialogue. And he's just confused. And here we have a second inspiration. Let's see what this one is. This one is Eve, actually. Uh, this one was redrawn pretty recently. Um, I can put up the old one on screen if I remember to. The old one was pretty bad. <laughs> but this one, I like this one. This room looks a lot like the first sort of like hard mode room, so I changed the floor texture to differentiate it. Yeah, so there's that. I'm gonna go here. It's blank. I think that one changes into something in hard mode. I'm not entirely sure. Let's see. Is there anything else in this room? This one doesn't smell as nice. Yeah, it's sort of a joke from early in the game. Right, so so since I did that, um, like stop it achievement, where I clicked on the box a bunch of times, I think I'm gonna get a bunch of alternate dialogue that basically says Annie's colorblind, and it's just a really long extended joke for doing that achievement. <laughs> uh, all these breaks, so it basically forces you into the middle. I was kind of happy with that. And here is Brendan. We found him. And I really like how this exchange goes right at the beginning. It just sort of makes Brendan feel like an asshole without actually making him say anything. And that's that's sort of Brendan's like point, I guess. She, she's kind of mad because he led her down here. This thing again? Let's see. Right, okay, this scene, I remember, this scene was originally, it wasn't exactly the same as this, it was originally going to be um, Brendan was being harassed by two statues, and Annie would fend them both off by burning them. Also, a lot of this dialogue was different. The, so the idea is, Brendan already knows about Annie, but she doesn't know that. This drawing was also changed pretty recently, just because the old one was really, really old, and it didn't look very good. And <laughs> the statue turns into a pile of clay. One of my playtesters thought that was very funny. So the original thing with Annie was that she was going to need sunlight to power her abilities. But I just sort of got rid of that. So originally this scene she was going to pass out. And Brendan, the next room had like a skylight in it. That saw it side. I like how this, uh, this line of dialogue turned out. It just goes off the edge. It's a long story. So she pauses there because Brendan said her name. That's the first time it happens. <laughs> and then I added this little scene here later on. I don't really remember why I added this. I think it was just to make Annie feel a bit more personable. And she goes on. Uh oh, here comes Kylie. She, she's question marks for now. And she realizes that Annie isn't really a threat. Oh, I accidentally hit X. Whoops. <laughs> so, okay, so this line and that painting about a pocket watch, and there's one more 
reference later in the game are all references to a book called Switch by Ingrid Law. And it's basically a kid's book, but I read it when I was little and it was really good. So I just stuck a couple references to it in the game. <laughs> I added to both of those later. So, originally, this sort of story of this game, so this sort of backstory here, was way different and way longer. And it was this whole thing about how it was like a government experiment, and it went wrong, and like energy released all over the world. And I, the, my first playtester played it, and he said, why did you write the story of Half-Life? And I looked at it, and I literally wrote the story of Half-Life. So I just I changed it. <laughs> And I, I made it much less complicated. Yeah, and he thinks she has a curse. She doesn't like having powers. And that's sort of the idea that comes out of this. That's crazy. Yeah, clearly Brendan knows. And then there's this little question thing. In the original version of the game, this was all mandatory, and it this dialogue was extremely long and boring. And this this one's interesting because Brennan's lying the entire time because he's not the artist. He just decided to try it one day. <laughs> Obviously. In hard mode, this option gets changed to a bunch of lines of Annie monologuing to herself, and it's a reference to a very interesting webcomic called Apricot Cookies. If you want to read it, it's on Webtoon, I think. It's, it's a webcomic that isn't 18+, plus, but it tries as hard as possible to be. It's a very silly comic. And I, caught, I, I recreated most of the lines of dialogue, except for one of them, which was taken out, because it was a bit too far, in my opinion. And Brenda's a little confused here because of what he wants to do. He, sa he says, huh. Or I, I think originally he said, huh. He's confused at why Annie would hate having her power. Oh, he knows. <laughs> Did you intend to make moving art? I think that was one a really old joke that was that just stuck. I hope not. Yeah. Uh, let me. I'm looking at the original script. Uh, yeah, he, he says I didn't create moving art. At least I don't think I did. And then they both just stared at each other. There were others. Let's just keep going. This was another really old joke. Yep, it's just another thing the government's hiding from us. Yeah, well, we don't know. This is a heavy parallel to real life. <laughs> Mostly a curse, though. But I'm stuck with it now. And again, he says her name, and she's a little confused. Hit me. How do you know my name? And she gets interrupted. And here comes some redone art. Kylie appears. I like how this one turned out. Brandon, what the hell is that? Let's see. Originally, Kylie was just gonna flash on screen briefly and was gonna scare them, but I had this little interaction here. Get out of here. And you can tell, I mean, if you're really observant, Brendan knows who she is. And poof. She's gone. 
Where'd it go? It's nothing any. And Brendan joins your party. Woo. What's this? Yeah, it's supposed to be Kylie. In hard mode, that changes to Kylie. This one, let's see. This is a, a reference to uh, a book series called Michael Vey. I read it a lot when I was a kid. It's a quote from the book. It's It didn't really inspire this game, but it's just a fun little book series. Let's see. I know I added a lot of descriptions to this room recently. Stickers, red clay. Oh yeah, so that, that's one of the color jokes. Yay! <laughs> I think he already knew. Also, how does he know my name? I never told him, did I? I like watching this part of uh, YouTube playthroughs because they realize. And this is a transition between the two galleries, so let's see. And it's supposed to look like Annie. <laughs> Familiar. Let's see this? These lines weren't in the original script. I don't think this room was in the original script. Motorcycle. This is Sayonara Wild Hearts. It's a fun little mobile game. It's just origami. Just drop it. Let's see, what's this one? Okay, so we're gonna... I'm gonna talk about this one later. It's another book series. But... Yeah, there are maybe, I would say, like, 50 references to this book series in the game. I will talk about it later. Let's see, what's this one? This is the, that's the same book series, I think. Yeah, that is. Here comes chapter two. The, uh, most of the origami shown here is, uh, me downloading Google Images and tracing over them. <laughs> yeah, so this is, this is part of the script. And now I'm finally here talking with the creator. Although, I didn't expect to be trapped with him in the basement, surrounded by moving statues and haunted art. Oh my god, that's cut off. Darn it. <laughs> yeah, fun times. It's another reference to that book series. Air vent. So, for a second while we're here, I want to talk about this game's background sound system, because it's actually pretty sophisticated. It's based on how it works in the uh, Minecraft Nether. Um, so there's we have the music, which I mean I can I can in post I can separate each track and play them on. So we have the music. And then a sort of background drone. And then background sound effects that go on top of everything. And the sound effects play on a on a timer, but it's randomized which one that gets played. Various art supplies, various art supplies. Oh, this one has extra dialogue. And he says, do, do you use these, huh? Oh yeah, because he, he doesn't actually, but he has to pretend he does. I'm gonna save. <laughs> this room, okay, so this room's weird. It is, it, the, it is designed for people who have played Witch's House, and it is the exact opposite of the first thing that can kill you in that game. Because in that game, if you there's a little piece of blood on the floor, and if you step on it, you just die. So everyone's like, oh, just go around it, but then you die. <laughs> or you can just run away. There's also that switch over there, which is kind of evil, in my opinion. 
and the paper talks to you. I was really, I was originally gonna have it checked if you died to this paper, and then if you died to it, Annie would have different dialogue. But I just figured that'd be too weird. Here come the blue shoes, which is another witch's house thing. <laughs> They're very um blue. <laughs> Brendan doesn't know what she's talking about. <laughs> it's such a weird conversation. I bet they'd look cute on- No. Sorry. <laughs> this is the one hole in the game that just appears out of nowhere. One of my first- uh, originally there used to be a lot of holes that just came at you out of nowhere, and one of the playtesters did not like that, so I got rid of all of them. Hey! And you get teleported to a different room. It's right behind us. I'm not actually gonna save here, I'm gonna pull up, uh... I'm gonna go down here, so you get this dialogue. Sign Rex and it just reads, oops. And then you die. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Didn't mean at that time. It's pretty easy to trick the AI in this game. I should probably get a plug-in that makes it better, but... I th yeah, I think I lost it. Do you really have time for this? Phew, that was close. Oh, he has. He's seen Jane before. I, I don't know if I made it clear enough that Jane is the one doing all of this. Um, I tried to make it obvious later on. So we have this room. This room loops a bunch of times. This is a reference to a Steam game called Unreal Life. It's really good. It had it's inspiration for a lot of like the sudden aspects in this game because there's a lot of that game had a lot of sudden things. What does that say? Wait, that was another faint. Yeah, you still can't tell what color they are. <laughs> that doesn't have any dialogue. Oops. And we're gonna go in between the clocks, and I just ran into that and died. Crap. I'm just gonna cheat. <laughs> I don't wanna do that again. That's a that's a dev thing, you can't actually do that in the game. Hopefully. <laughs> I'm also just gonna skip this room. Yeah. Ooh, a fire breathing origami dragon. Brendan's kind of a weirdo. So you've never tried? Maybe we could save that for when we get out of here. I really should try that. Yeah, she shouldn't. Nope, that also doesn't have any dialogue. He clearly doesn't. <laughs> Butterfly. There used to be a really bad default RPG maker effect that played when you did that, but I just got rid of it. Another traffic cone. Brennan has no clue, even though he clearly does. It only says that line, heard a door unlocking, if it's the second time, or if, if it's like you've already done the other puzzle. I was kind of happy with that. This room used to be a lot different. Oh, here comes a funny joke. So, there's gonna be some rusty nails that fall. That's a reference to a webcomic called Detox Camp. Rusty nails. She's like, she doesn't want anything to do with it. Yeah, so this room used to be a lot different. It used to be that if, again, it was inspired by Witch's House. If you step to the side at all, you just die. Um, it, was inspired, it was inspired by that one room in Witch's House where it's the same thing, but you have to go down and then they throw a knife at you, but it's a fake knife. But I just got rid of it because it was kind of stupid. 
A clock. This is a clock. Wooden table, pile of clay. It's been welded to the ground. That used to be in a different spot in the game, and then I moved it here. It's very, um, blue. <laughs> Forgot I did that. Fake Dora drawn on canvas. It looks so real. Pile of clay. Full of crumpled paper. She's she's concerned at all the crumpled origami. What is this sign? Oh yeah, this sign's funny. Sign under construction. What the hell? Let me scroll down on my document. Right, originally at some point in this gallery, Kylie was going to appear again and like threaten you and then just leave. Oops. Right, so the reason, so there's that moving hole. The reason there's two extra holes right here, it's so that you can't get to this, this tile here. I just use a cheat to get to it. Because if you got here and then stepped on the hole, it would just soft lock you. Let's see. More butterflies. That one changes dialogue if you're in the chase sequence. Right, so this this painting is also a reference to that Switch book by Ingrid Law. It's a nice little kid's book if you want to read it. Been down here for so long. Here comes the symmetry room. Um, this is also inspired by Witch's House. <laughs> Except that game did it much better. I'm just gonna do this really fast. There's actually some secret dialogue here. It's I don't think anybody's found it. Hang on. Rip off note. Now if you put the pen back and you go here, select the note. I don't have anything to write with. I wanna make that an achievement because it's really obscure. So you gotta go get the pen again. the pen back, put the note back, there's absolutely nothing inside, red and green, or not green, what am I talking about, blue, sorry my cursor was on screen, cursor, something did change, you actually have to look at these first before you can interact with the other blue shoes. This is kind of the first time Annie starts to doubt who Brendan is. Great job. This cutscene kind of breaks if you stand on the wrong side of the table. But it's okay. Like it doesn't it doesn't soft lock the game, so it's fine. Got glass shoes. If you go up here, except those shoes, you can have them. Smiley face. <laughs> Let's see. Huge gas tank. That's another hint of where this game takes place. It's supposed to be Kylie. It changes to Kylie in hard mode. I'm gonna save here because there's some long dialogue coming up. This is probably the oldest art that's still in the game. I need to redo this. It's fine, it's the oldest art and the newest floor texture. So if, for those who don't know, I draw on a mouse using Krita. Um, I draw with a lot of smoothing at 1200 DPI. Um, yeah, just, just, I don't use a tablet, I don't use uh, an iPad, or I don't sketch. I just do line art and color it, and it, I feel like it works pretty well, so, yeah. Let's see, I'm scrolling down on my document page. So, I have Annie, stay back. Why 
are you still trying to do this? It's not going to work. Right, this was changed pretty recently. Brennan was given a motive beyond just being an asshole. You have to get out of here. Wait, so you do know her? Who is she? And Brandon just completely ignores her. It is important. She's a little scared now. Brandon loves saying that. And then here comes, uh, it comes to life. Oof. They change positions. And here we get the first mention of a Jane. And Brendan realizes that he might be in trouble. Oops, shit. <laughs> right, I'm gonna save here because some of these paintings actually change. It takes forever to go through, <laughs> and then you just die. And I think the other one changes too, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I'm gonna save here as well. I don't, I don't think yeah, these ones have regular dialogue. Just because there's so many of them. No way we're going back there. I'm gonna save in here again, hang on. Each of these rooms have a different thing that kills you if you go in it during this chase. This one... Oh, I, I disabled that one because it was kind of broken. Go, go, go. In testing, Brendan kind of missed his, like, position a lot of the time. Like, you'd go one or two short of where he's supposed to stand. And I never figured out why, but I kind of just released the game and it never happened again. So, I don't know. I'm pretty sure he's in the right position right now. He's either in the right position or one too far out. I can't really remember. Stab Brendan. This 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 sort of scene was in the game since the very beginning. I knew I knew I, knew I wanted this to happen. Here comes everybody. Why are you helping him? And he's just confused. Just want to go home. Kylie, in some of her dialogue, her sprite is flipped. I think in most of it, when she's talking to Annie, but when it's just her, it's not flipped. Kylie is sort of the only sprite that looks okay flipped, because Annie's does not, and Jane's also doesn't really work flipped. I can put on screen what they look like flipped. There goes Kylie. And he's just confused. <laughs> Let's see. Scrolling down my dialogue page. There used to be a little bit more of this scene earlier, but I got rid of some of it. Please don't tell me a story. 
So I want to talk about unused faces for a little bit, because each character actually has a bunch of them. Um, mostly Kylie, I think she has the most. I can put on screen some of them. It was for the original ending of this game, where Kylie turned back into a human. And I just changed completely changed that ending, and I now had 20 faces that just were completely unused. I'll talk about that more when we get to the ending, because that's mostly where the story changes happened. Now we have Annie Sitting, which I think was also inspired by uh, the Anne sprites. Hello! Right, so this part of the game sort of is different from the original script. From here on out, the original script of the game, back when I first came up with the story, was that Jane was still alive, but she was, like, kidnapped in the basement. And so there's still this note, but Jane would realize that Annie was a friend and would sort of, like, guide her to where she was being kept. And then Brendan would come in and there'd be, like, this really weird final fight between Annie and Brendan. This is a reference to, uh, what's it called? Data Wing. It's a fun mobile game. Let's see. Uh, Project Cat. Uh, if Found. It's an interesting game. Just a bit of torn rope. That's heavy foreshadowing. <laughs> And we have some dialogue that actually can show up in two places. I like how this how I made that work. Just one example. Sounds kind of shitty. Yeah, it does. <laughs> huh. So the reason there's this here. It's because Kylie and Jane saw Annie fit like helping Brendan, and now they're really mad at her, so they're trying to scare her. Um, yeah. She goes here. I don't think there's anything different here, except there's no lines with Brendan anymore. Hopefully. <laughs> Very um blue. Yeah, here's the second line. And he did. He knows my name. There is some okay, so this dialogue, it might be on a random chance, but I can't really remember. There's a chance for her to say different dialogue that's also a reference to that book series I said that has like fifty references in this game. The ghost. This is so weird. So Annie also has maybe I think like a one in twenty chance of saying this is getting or this is getting weirder all the time, uh, which is not proper English, but it's a reference to Sonic Generations actually, because one of the characters has a line that says that in the game, and it's just really weird. Let's see. I think this one changes? No, that only changes the hard mode. You go back here. This looks just like Kylie. You're right. Let's see, I'm looking through my dialogue script now. The only thing, I mean, this scene was going to happen in any version of the game. Um, but the dialogue was the dialogue was different just because the story was different. Yeah, so this scene was mostly unchanged besides just the dialogue. 
Although this piece of art was added in February or so. I was originally going to say you will, or Annie was originally going to say, so you willingly turned yourself into a ghost? <clears throat> Brendan as a doctor. I should draw that. This is the first time you see Kylie and Jane sort of disagree on some things. Yeah, so Kylie's sprites are all reversed, and then let's see. I think Jane's are the right way around. It's kind of weird when Jane is talking to Annie, though, alone because their sprites are similar. Kylie is overwhelmed by anger. Jane is a bit more, not a bit less explosive than Kylie. That's sort of their personality traits. And he's just trying to keep everyone chill. And also Kylie thinks pretty badly of herself. It sucks because Jane did as well. Their, their stories are very similar, but they turned out in different ways. Let's see. Looking at my script. Back there. Have a weird question. Kylie's too stubborn to answer her. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this dialogue was taken out just because it was too weird. Originally, I think originally Brennan just straight up killed Kylie and she came back as a ghost. But it was just taken out because, like, why would he kill her for no reason? And then Annie starts talking to Jane and... Oh, here comes Brendan. Let's see. Oh, look, that was a bit mistimed, whatever. <laughs> here comes Brendan. Hey, Annie. And Annie's very nervous. <laughs> what were you doing? I was just looking around, admiring all your beautiful art. And I really like how Brendan pauses for a second there. Like, you think he's going to say something bad, but then he just doesn't. Uh, yeah. So, we're coming up on the glass exhibit. And I'm just going to skip through this. The glass exhibit, the name was recently changed. Yeah. Thanks for helping me with that wound earlier. And Annie realizes what she's did. And so yeah, the, the glass exhibit, it used to be the technology exhibit. And it, the joke was going to be that Annie, being younger than Brendan, is be like, all oh, you young people and your technology. Oh yes, here's the flash drive. I almost forgot to get that. We're gonna give that back to Anne in the gallery. Just 
Frittles all over. Probably Jane. And now that you've gotten to know them, yeah, now it changes. And this one changed as well. It's the it's a machine that's operating on Kylie. Let's see. I'm gonna save here. I think now that we know Brennan's bad, some of these have changed. I'm gonna just double check. That one say the same. Oh, by the way, just a little cheat. If you ever want to speedrun this game, you can hold tab to spam through text really fast. It's a plugin. Let's see. Yeah, so the, the technology gallery was changed to the glass gallery, I think in around mid-February. It was very recently before the game came out. We're not going to do that. We're going to explore this room now because we can. As I switch, it's welded to the floor. <laughs> Pointing out what the player thinks. Here's another reference to that uh, book series. What does this one say? Yeah, it's just random. Bits of torn rope inside. Right, I'm just going to run for it. Although there is dialogue now in these, I think. Well, there should be. In hard mode, there is, yeah. There's those two, and you can't get to that one. To the glass exhibit. And now Annie knows for sure that Brennan's lying to him. Here comes some glass. Again, these drawings are just Google image tracing over them. So let's talk about this song. This is the, I think the one thing in the game I, I didn't do alone. The violin in this song, I had one of my friends do it. And the song is very much based on uh, the Risk of Rain 2 uh, Survivors of the Void DLC, one of the songs from that game. And we're going to be breaking all the bottles. <laughs> Basically the difference between this song and the original is that the instruments are reversed, so the part that has the violin I think is on piano in the original song. And the, the piano part is like a stringed instrument. In the original. Uh, yeah. Some of the traffic on. I hope they're right. It's just random. Another Luigi board. That breaks. Does it break? I think I made it break. I can't remember. Maybe it's a different one. Here's Annie. Hello. It's her again. <laughs> Let's see. I'm gonna do the water room in a second. I just wanna look here. There's just some extra dialogue. Must be missing something. <clears throat> nice and refreshing. What the hell? They're doing this just to scare him, like they said. So, <laughs> interestingly enough, one of the sound effects that plays in the background in this area is actually a somewhat modified version of the glass breaking sound from Minecraft. I was gonna get rid of it, but I just figured it'd be a little funny. Right, 
Okay, so the other thing that's changed is the footstep sound in this room. It used to be a default cursor sound effect that came with RPG Maker, but I changed it to a modified version of the uh, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door footstep sound that Mario has. Oh, I'm dead. I don't know why I did that. I survived somehow. Um, and I just, I, I really like that sound effect. <laughs> That's basically it. Uh, so here is Omori. This is another, it's pretty old. I'm probably gonna change this maybe. Actually, I do have a piece ready that could replace this. I might put it in the next patch. It's much better. <laughs> so yeah, interestingly enough, in the uh, game code, this area is called the Ballora Gallery, just because it is inspired by that. I'm just gonna run because it can't catch you if you just run in a straight line. Here's another uh, inspiration drawing. Right, this is the newest one. This is uh, Witch's House. I like how this drawing turned out. I think it's really good. All right, let's get out of here. I'm, uh, I'm gonna save. No, I'm just gonna run again. How this so basically how this works is um, if you run, it knows exactly where you are. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, so if you run, it knows exactly where you are. But if you walk, it just moves around randomly unless you're right next to it. But unfortunately, it's still susceptible to all the other pathfinding glitches that affect everything else in this game. So yeah. It, it only knows where I was before because I ran. So I'm just going to run now. And it won't catch me. Yeah, I'm safe. And it slams on the door. I should make that more clear, I think. Alright. Ooh, I got a loading screen. Now. That's shouldn't really happen. Interesting. Originally, I was going to make this, like, blood water or something. But I just gave up, because it was about to be released. In hard mode, she says, it did work in that other horror game, right? Because it's Witch's House. <laughs> Her feet change. And now we're going to go back and get an achievement. <laughs> I don't know how people found this. It's super obscure. This like this achievement was just to be make the most obscure achievement possible and it got found in like 2 days and I don't know how. All right, let's go. I think Annie stops blinking as long as you have the shoes on, just because they take a lot more sprites to make that work. Looks hastily drawn. It is. There's a lamppost inside. What's this doing here? So, there used to be... I'm scrolling down on my old script sheet. Hang on. Yeah, okay, so Brendan used to, f you do, ah, the old version of this game, you would pull a switch in this room, it would open a path across the water, and Brendan would follow you into this room, um, and then he would fall asleep in this room, and you'd go ahead without him, because he was tired from his injury. But I just changed it to this, because it makes a lot more sense. Map of the world. Map of Japan. Jane giving you a thumbs up. <laughs> Cause you escaped Brendan. And the music gets progressively lower and lower pitched. So you know something's gonna happen. Sealed box. Sealed box. Lots of sealed boxes. Oh. 
Okay, that's actually pretty unlucky. So the Y position in the room where you get transported to this scene is actually random. It gets set a couple rooms before this. And that's just about the earliest it can show up. Spooked me a little bit. Here comes a Jane jump scare. <laughs> I don't really know why that's there. That's just a little spooky. This is Gunner Creek Court. It's a very big inspiration of mine. It, it really inspired uh, Annie. I used to read all the books when I was little. Alright, so let's just keep going. Again, in this in these rooms you used to play Frogger with the cars, but I got rid of that. Or I never implemented it. And now we have a really, really tall lamppost. Box with a jump rope inside. Traffic cone and this. Something is going on with your perspective, or maybe it's just the player playing the game. <laughs> Talks? So I think this is supposed to be Jane talking, but I don't I don't really know. <laughs> now one thing, Annie. Yeah, it is, I mean it is Jane talking, but it's just weird. Why is this happening to me? Yeah, so that's everything here. Got another mirror. Apparently this this one kind of breaks sometimes. I don't know, I think I fixed it. And let's go over here. Uh, yeah, a yellow crate with some yellow paper inside. Yeah, yeah. And here's one more. This is Anne. And that arrow is going to get stuck on screen, which should be an easy fix. Okay, good. <laughs> that happens occasionally. Let's see. Empty crate. Empty crate. Another traffic con. Looks like they're waiting for you. They're up here. I'm going to save. And here comes chapter four. Here comes the longest bit of dialogue in the entire game. This dialogue has mostly stayed the same. It's just sort of like better grammar. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, this dialogue has mostly stayed the same. That's it, basically. Wait a minute, no way. Parents don't no notice first. One thing was another, yep. That line is exactly the same as the initial script. That line as well. That yeah, all these lines are the same. Jane doesn't say thanks in the initial script. Yeah, Jane has a hard time talking about it, and she says it was my fault, and it's the same thing Kylie did. So you start to realize that their stories are very similar. The rules are just reversed from the previous conversation. Mm. See, th th this part is pretty different from the original. It's just going to be originally. It's just going to be about Brendan going like insane, but then I changed it to this because it ups the stakes a little bit.
so I sort of wanted to give the impression that Jane kind of had Stockholm Syndrome a little bit, but I, when I changed the story, it didn't really make sense anymore, so I, I threw most of it out, but I think some of it still stayed in the game. This is all new. So now that we're getting close to this game's ending, I want to talk about this game's different endings because originally this game has gone through three different ending stories. So I'll talk about it when we get closer. I think they're going to believe a ghost. Um, yeah, so the the ending now is they sort of fuse and chase you down the hall, and then you reason with them, and then you win. The original ending of the game, back when Jane was still alive, it was basically the, you find Jane, this would have been Jane's room, and Brendan would show up, and there'd be not really a fight, but sort of just like a, a word battle, and then... I think Annie burned Brendan and then he died, or maybe ran away or something. Um, yeah, that's it next. The second ending of the game was more similar to what it is now, and it's actually still in the game's code. I might be able to pull it up and show you after this game, after I finish. Um, Brendan's about to show up, so I'm gonna stop. And it was basically very similar, except the, after this scene, they didn't fuse, but it would be Brendan chasing you down the hall. And you'd get backed into, the, you'd get, go into that same room, that same big room that the final confrontation takes place in. And you'd be shown the scene of Jane committing suicide. And then, and then Brendan would come in and you'd sort of cheer up Kylie and Jane and make them feel better about themselves. And then Kylie would turn them both back into humans. Yeah, here comes Brendan. I'll talk about this line in a second because it's also a reference to something. Um, and then Kylie would turn Brendan into a ghost. And then you would win. Um, and then it was changed to the ending this game has now. Which I think is a, a much better ending. So this line, it was in the original script. Let me go find it. He said, if Brendan can't appreciate you for making all of it, he can. And then Brendan says, I can what? It's sort of a reference to Monsters University, uh, the Pixar movie, because they say that at the end. Uh-oh, here comes Brendan. And he's just super nonchalant. Like, he, he is kind of insane. That's kind of the idea. <laughs> I changed that recently. And then we have a super slowed down version of the chase theme. Are you sure they're even real? I think you're going a bit crazy. <laughs> I like that line. That was in the original script as well. So originally Brandon was going to go explain everything and then, and then Annie just shuts him up, like stop monologuing, please. I change it to that. O originally, Brennan was gonna say the line, getting a little hot-headed now, which I really liked, but it just didn't fit anywhere in the new story, so I took it out. So interestingly, so Annie's fire is animated here. It's actually her walk cycle. That's the only way you can really animate sprites in RPG Maker. So I, I have her just walking, and if, if the fire spray wasn't there, she'd just be walking in place right now. <laughs> and then we have Brendan kind of triggering both of them. Sort of saying what they don't want to hear. What they didn't tell Annie. In the original script, Brendan kind of just went insane here instead of saying this. Uh, 
That dude was terrible. And here's the thing, I made, I really wanted to make it so that in some kind of weird way, Brendan was right. Because technically, he's right, but in sort of like a wrong sort of way. And he, he, he gaslights her into thinking that Kai was Kylie's fault. And then Annie forces her out. Get out. And then she suddenly, she, she was very angry in the moment and suddenly she's like, oh my God, what did I just do? Like, I didn't mean to do that, even though she wanted to. It's very clear Annie doesn't want to hurt people. Of course. Yeah, originally Brennan died, I think, but not here. <laughs> Are you okay? But what Brennan said has gotten their heads. Interestingly, Kylie's sprite is the normal direction this time. Okay. I think I should flip that. Guys, hey, calm down. I also want to talk about the different sprites because Annie's sprites are all made are all made after the other three. Annie's sprites were made around February, and the other ones were around October twenty twenty one. Um, and you can definitely tell like there's a big difference between how the sprites look. Like my art style has changed. It's just a random piece of paper flying through the air. I don't know why I drew that. <laughs> So yeah, let's talk about this thing. Um, I knew I wanted some sort of monster to chase them, or to chase Annie. And I was stuck for a long time on what it should look like, but I just figured if they just like fused into a statue, it would be really cool. And then I drew it and it was even cooler than I thought it'd be. And it, it's just sort of a mismatch, a mishmash of how they look. I'm just gonna cheat myself through the walls because I don't want to deal with this thing. It's AI is actually hard. <laughs> Again, this is just a thing I can do because I'm in the dev mode of RPG Maker. And there's there's no, like, secret dialogue hidden here. Although I will point out, um, every room you go through is actually a different version. Like, it's not the same room in the game files. Like, it's a completely different room than what you originally go through. And mostly I did that so that the music wouldn't cut out every time you change rooms. It's just a weird quirk of how RPG Maker works. Alright, I'm gonna stop cheating now. <laughs> and we made it. Here's the final room. So, the old... The old enemy of the game is actually stored, I think, around here. I can pull up the, the game, a screenshot of the engine and uh, RPG Maker. But, yeah, the old ending is stored up there somewhere. Yeah. And originally there used to be a statue in the middle of this room that you would click on and it would show you the, the ending scene of, of Jane. Um, but I just had it so that the monster confronted you and then you just see it. Um, there's also a weird lighting glitch that occurs when the camera pans down. I don't know why that happens. I've tried to fix it, but uh, I don't really know. But here comes the monster. You have to tell me what's going on. So I didn't really write dialogue for them here, but I think this is sort of like the actual versions of Jane or Kylie. It's kind of poking through. I think they're supposed to say like Annie, and then hate like we hate us, hate each other. Brendan hates us, something like that. But I, I didn't really 
care that much. Just, you have to tell me what's wrong. They're not gonna do that. And Annie falls to her death and the game's over. <laughs> See, I'm scrolling down my dialogue page. Yeah, this is all new. This scene here. This scene used to be in the glass gallery, and you'd go up, and it would be just, it would be just the lamp post and Jane, and it would have most. It would basically just be Jane talking to herself, and then she'd chase you, and and there'd be a jump scare that was Jane hanging herself. So basically, they did, the idea was that you knew that Jane committed suicide before that big confrontation with Brendan in that room. Um, but I just took that out because I felt that was too early of a reveal. Like, you'd know that she did it, but you didn't know why until now. But I just changed that. And this is basically them talking to each other, arguing with each other in the, in the two-headed statue. Shut up. And I think this is where you start to understand what happened. But she she can't say it. She she can't say it out loud. Let's see, I'm scrolling down. And he suddenly gets really determined to fix everything. All right, let's go finish the game. Annie, don't. Here's the scene. Originally, this was going to be... So when it was... So, uh, yeah, in, in the second ending of the game, where you killed Brendan at the end, it was going to be Brendan who actually killed Jane um, by dragging her outside and like killing her somewhere. So this, this scene was actually reused from that like original... Like, this original map was used from that, except it was just Jane walking instead of Brennan, like, pulling her. I really, I really think these three lines are powerful, because it, it's a sudden realization of what happened. And you, it, every, all the YouTubers I've seen suddenly realize what's going to happen, and uh, they get pretty nervous about getting demonetized. Just kidding, Lamau. Um, although, a lot of them didn't notice that Jane's sprite is actually completely different here. It's... And she's a human, she's still alive now, and she has highlights in her hair. And she has a different, uh, sp like, dialogue spread as well. With, uh, more human-colored skin and the highlight. And yeah, now we have this. I'm thinking of redoing this drawing, because, again, it's really old, but... I don't know. I think I think this one works pretty well. There's an uncropped version that is a bit more zoomed out that I can pull up on the screen maybe. But yeah. And then we have a constant static effect that plays in this room just to make it seem a bit darker. And he suddenly realizes, I'm just gonna, yeah. And 
I'm just gonna skip that. This basically forces you to go to the right place. And then it takes over movement from you. Now we have the conversation. I'm scrolling down. Right, so this conversation in the original script of the game happened in like the main room instead of this like pseudo dream sequence. Um, and Brendan was going to like chase you into it, but Annie was going to block her off or block him off and then talk to each of the girls separately. Um, I'm reading the script now. Yeah, the original script was basically any saying that Brendan has been gaslighting you and you need to snap out of it. But I think this is a lot better because it sort of gives an insight into the past, like what happened between Kylie and Jane. And this line and sort of subsequent, subsequent lines with the same meaning I was really hesitant about putting this in the game because I, I think it's it's a really interesting, I guess, situation. And I'd, I'd, li I'd like to see what people, I mean, obviously I really hope this never happens to anybody, but what people would do if they're in a situation like this, if they tell their friend to stand up to an abuser, if, it, if they knew it would lead to something bad happening to them. It's an interesting situation, I guess. And now Annie convinces Jane that it wasn't Kylie's fault, it was Brendan's. And her hunch is that Kylie saved her. And she's right. Let's see. Originally this sort of like thing about Kylie saving Jane was gonna be done visually. It was gonna be Kylie coming across Jane's corpse or hanging, or like her hanging and then saving her. But I just figured it'd be a bit less cringe to do it, just talking. Yeah, now we know that, now we see that Kylie believes herself that she killed Jane. Right, so I talked about this game's endings. Yeah, the, the script of this game never had alternate... Actually, it, it did have alternate endings. There was going to be one very early on where you would fight Brendan and lose, and then he would, like, kill you, I think, around this time in the game. But I just figured I didn't want any fight scenes. I didn't need... This game doesn't need battles. doesn't need conflict that much. The conflict is the emotional conflict between Jane and Kylie and Annie. So it doesn't need anything more than that. I think this scene is kind of inspired by Eastward too. Like the very, I mean, spoilers obviously, but the very ending of Eastward when the two Sams separate from each other. I like that scene a lot, so I put it in this kind of. And Jane can't really get through to Kylie, so she has to bring up Annie. I tried here to make the dialogue seem pretty realistic, like they're stuttering, they're saying things over and over again, because they're just nervous. All three of them. I think I want to talk for a little bit about things that I tried to avoid saying in this game. The biggest one was I, w I wanted to avoid any kind of religious... Uh, dialogue at all so I don't know if people have noticed but no character in this game ever says like oh my god or oh my gosh they'll either just swear or not say anything um, I just didn't really want to get into that like whole thing um, there's a lot of swearing but there's no like there's no like 
inappropriate stuff besides that because I did, I want I still want to make this game like YouTube friendly. <clears throat> This dialogue here was all from the all from the original script. Mm, well said, I avoid saying. Yeah, uh, aside from the one image of Jane hanging herself, there's no other character that specifically says what Jane did. It's kind of in universe because they don't want to talk about it. Um, but yeah, I, those are the things I avoided saying. I also want to talk about Kylie and Jane because towards the end of development, I really wanted to put in, how do I explain this? So I have a, a side story written for this game. I might put it in the, like the description of this video, but it's, it sort of is, takes place after this game. And it's, I wanted to imply at the end of this game that Kylie and Jane might be a little bit more than just friends in reality. And it's kind of hard to do because I don't know anything about relationships, but yeah, let's see. In hard mode, there's actually a lot more dialogue that kind of implies this, but there's still some here. While you listen to a slowed down version of the credits theme. And now they're they're basically saying all the advice they gave earlier, but in a more positive light. So Annie's gonna go tip off the police. Right, okay. I remember the game's original like ending ending. Annie was actually gonna go to the police station and tip them off. But I figured like it's not like that can just happen off screen, like it's fine. And uh, the side story I wrote is all about Annie arranging something for these guys. What about you? So this is the one line I think that implies it in normal mode. Jane could use a friend, you know? Heh <laughs> heh. Let's stay in touch, okay? Sets up the side story. I guess epilogue, I guess, not a side story. Yeah, this little cutscene here that I'm not very happy with because <laughs> the door is the wrong color. Yeah, so that is any in the art gallery. And I hope you guys enjoyed this devlog, um, or dev developer commentary. I just want to walk through a few things that have changed in the gallery since the beginning, because most of the dialogue is actually different. Let's see. I'm cursed out of there. Let's see. Right, this reminds her about Jane. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh yeah, let me get the uh, flash drive. Let's see. <clears throat> yeah, this was an idea I had pretty early in development. I wanted to make a reference to Anne in some way. So I just did that. And that's it for the game. Let's just go through the final dialogue. Oh yeah, sometimes that happens. It plays that online. Strange. I'm gonna get to this little animated scene with 
Annie in the right side of the screen. If I ever make another game, it's going to have busts that look like this instead of faces. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. And yeah. So let's talk about the credit song. This is a I, I did all parts of this. So I did the instruments and the vocal and the vocals. Um, I recently added so you can press shift to mute it and I'm gonna do that in a few seconds, but let's see. So yeah, there's the vocals and I just muted it. Okay, good. That works. Um, yeah, so I mean most of this is just stuff I've already talked about. I could talk about these inspirations a little bit. Um... Yeah, some of these ones at the bottom are kind of vague, and I haven't really touched on them, but, yeah. <clears throat> this, uh, this is really boring without the music. <laughs> but yeah, this has been Annie of the Art Gallery Developer Commentary. I hope you enjoyed watching, I hope you enjoyed my terrible commentary and long periods of awkward silence. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to keep updating this game and make sure there aren't any bugs, and yeah. Hard mode has been unlocked. <clears throat> I think the next, the next update will just be bug fixes. I think there's just, I don't know, there's just different things that need to be fixed. But yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.